Welcome Great. to today's Lunch and Learn webinar, reducing the time and complexity of customer quote and order creation with ExperLogix CPQ, brought to you by ArcherPoint and ExperLogix. Today's manufacturers and distributors are challenged with streamlining quote to order fulfillment time and improving order accuracy. If you're using Dynamics Business Central or NAV, you likely still have some of these challenges. Today, we're introducing you to ExperLogix CPQ, an application that will make you more competitive and improve bottom line profitability and operational efficiency. Our session today is being hosted by Gwen Golden, Executive CPQ Vice President at ExperLogix. Gwen has 20 years of experience in the business applications market, serving small to medium sized businesses and enterprise size Microsoft Dynamics CRM and ERP customers in a variety of industries. Prior to joining ExperLogix, Gwen held leadership and senior level professional services and consulting positions in several Microsoft Dynamics channel partner organizations. In today's webinar, Gwen will show you how quotes and orders can be streamlined within Dynamics and AV, our business central, demonstrate how a CPQ solution can ensure your sales reps are working from the same pricing and products, services, rule book, and more. So let's go ahead and get started. Gwen, over to you. Great, thank you. So thank you everybody for attending today. Um, I am gonna be talking about how we can reduce that time and complexity of our customers' quotes and orders uh, within CPQ. And right off the bat, some of you may be unsure of what CPQ stands for and why companies need it. So I thought I'd just take a moment to kind of explain this process here. So the C of CPQ stands for configure. And what we wanted to help you with is to be able to help you configure your quotes by adding products and or services with any related accessories in a guided selling user interface. So we really wanna make it easy. Uh, we wanna make sure that we enable you to price your products or services based on any variable that you need to. So that's kind of the P of CPQ. And then ultimately you wanna be able to produce a professionally looking quote to your customer. So by adding a CPQ solution, really how does that help customers? Um, well, first of all, your salespeople are going to spend more time selling, less time with admin work, uh, which is really what we want them to be doing. Every sales person in your organization becomes an expert at selling your product or services. So I'll talk a little bit about that as we go through. And then ultimately, we want to ensure that you have option compatibility. So products or services that shouldn't be sold together, uh, we'll make sure that that happens. Um, the other thing you may be asking yourself is, you know, am I an industry that could take advantage of CPQ? And the way that I um, talk about this is that any company that has complex quoting requirements is a good fit for CPQ. And in all of these industries, whether it be, uh, I know there's some people on the call maybe doing data centers, hardware software companies, uh, manufacturers, uh, all of these areas have your own uniqueness in the way that you need to put together a quote encompassing your products and your services. So uh, I think you probably find that you'll fit in one of these areas. And I also thought that I'd pull up a slide just kind of talking about some of the customers that ExperLogix has helped. And um, every logo that you're seeing here is from a company that is using ExperLogix with Microsoft Dynamics. Um, whether it be uh, the CRM side or an ERP solution. So ExperLogix does support the Microsoft CRM as well as NAV and Business Central, which I'm gonna be talking about today. Um, Archer Point, great partner of ours. We have had some success with them as well. So Ellsworth Adhesives as well as QuickLock are companies that are using ExperLogix today. I thought that might be useful for some of you to know that. And then just kind of talking about with companies that we've worked with, we find that there's certain tools that most companies use and it kind of becomes a theme. Um, many companies like to use Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel to help them with their quoting. 
a lot of companies are still using product catalogs, so paper-based, or people are having to flip through a product catalog to get to some pricing information. Uh, maybe they're using an old legacy system um, that is outdated, isn't connected to anything. Uh, we still run into situations where customers are doing pen and paper on a napkin, if you will, uh, putting together a quote and um, figuring out how they're going to sell something. And then most companies often have that person or people in their organization that just know how to sell the product. So we go to them all the time um, to be able to ask them, how should I be quoting this? Well, the problem with one or all of these solutions is that it ends up potentially taking a really long time to put together a quote. So maybe your competitors are getting quotes out faster because you're using some of these older systems. Uh, we're wondering if it's right. So is it what the customer requested? Does it make sense? When we're using some of these other solutions, we don't have the confidence that it's actually being done right. Because if people are using Word and Excel, there's room for manual mistakes. Um, if we're using old systems, uh, then we're having to transfer it out and it could be, uh, it's just a manual process that causes some problems. And then ultimately it's not integrated. So how are you able to do your forecasting appropriately? Um, so these are some of the things that we really wanna help you with um, to be able to get it into a system where everything is working together. And for the demonstration today, what I'm going to be going through is talking about how ExperLogix actually works with the quotes, orders, production orders, routing within D365 Business Central, as well as um, Microsoft Dynamics Nav. And I'm actually going to show it in both scenarios. So this is kind of the, the process that we'll go through. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and flip over into my um, demo environment. And what we're going to do first is take a look at ExperLogix running in Dynamics Nav, and then I'll transition over into showing it to Business Central. And I'm going to start off with just a, a simple example, kind of a fun example, to show you how ExperLogix works within the application. And then I've got a couple other um, demos that I'll show you as well. So first of all, it's important to know that ExperLogix does work within sales um, orders and quotes. In any of these areas that you started from, you would just start a new quote, select your customer, and you'll notice up here in the ribbon is the area for ExperLogix, where we can now configure this particular um, quote or order. And what you'll notice happens is that it's actually loading up a product hierarchy. And as mentioned, I've got a couple examples um, that I'm going to be showing you. So we'll give that just a moment to refresh. And I'll expand that window. Okay, so what I've done is I've loaded up a couple different examples that I'm going to be um, showing you today. Um, Keep in mind with ExperLogix, this is all customizable to how you want to use it. And in this first example that I'm going to focus on is um, configuring a fish aquarium. And you'll notice that if you were to configure a small aquarium, it's going to have different options and pricing and things that would be configurable than a medium or even a large aquarium. And once you make one of these selections, you can actually be prompted with another selection. So in this case, if we're configuring an aquarium, we might be asking the customer if they're interested in just the tank or if they want a tank and a pedestal. Um, once you've made that selection, what ExperLogix will do is load up the most popular choices. And so you'll notice that right off the bat that on the left-hand side here, we have different categories of things that are configurable about this particular aquarium. And um, we'll be able to add in some fish and some plants and some gravel and have some logic and rules that help guide us through the process. In the bottom left-hand corner, we call this the status bar. This is real-time updating of any calculated field that's important for the sales rep to see. So in this case, based on how it is currently configured as a 32 by 16 by 18, it's a 40 gallon tank. And it's actually a 40 gallon glass aquarium because we've got the material glass. 
Now, as we start to make some changes to this configuration, you'll notice that you can do things like see what it's gonna look like dimensionally. So if we were to change this from a 32 to 40, it's going to redraw that for you. We change the width from a 16 to a 20. We'll go ahead and see what that looks like. Um, it is now updating what the cost of this tank is going to be. Um, we can do things like marking up or marking down um, the price that we want to sell this tank for. And behind the scenes, as we go through the configuration, ExperLogix is creating a full bill of material for, in this case, the tank and the pedestal. So as we go through and we're putting in dimensional information, ExperLogix is tracking that so we know what the length is, what the cost per square feet, feet is, what the total cost of that particular component is going to be, and rolling it up into the total cost to manufacture this. Okay, well, let's take a look at a couple rules that enforce accuracy. So again, if we're going through and talking to the customer and they've decided the 62 gallon tank looks good, now they wanna go ahead and add in a tower pedestal. So we'll add in the tower pedestal and the tower pedestal has some different choices of things that we can change. Um, maybe they wanna add in some fish. So let's add a goldfish to this tank. And you know, they come back here and they say, you know what, um, I actually changed my mind. I uh, want a little bit larger, so let's go ahead and change that to a 45. Well, what's happened is ExperLogix now processed a rule. And it says that based on that size tank, a salt monitor has to be purchased in a large volume saltwater tank. And so it's automatically added that component in. This gives a, a great example of how if the sales rep had forgotten to add that, that would have been you know, a problem for the customer that they didn't have that salt monitor. And ExperLogix is smart enough to know that if they change this from a salt water to a freshwater tank, then no longer is that salt monitor needed. So it's going to go ahead and remove it from the configuration. And in effect, if we come down into the accessories of where that is, we actually can't add in a salt monitor because it is a freshwater tank. Okay, so every time that the sales rep is making some changes, it's going to be reevaluating and looking at the different things that are needed for this particular configuration. Okay. So the user can continue on, and let's say that they're they're going through and uh, making some additional changes. Maybe they want to um, take out the small colored gravel. Well, in this case, we've got another rule that's firing. It's saying, well. You don't have to have small colored gravel, but you have to have something. And so that is a required component of this configuration. As soon as the user selects an item that is applicable, then they can continue on. And so the idea is make it fast, make it easy, make sure that the sales rep isn't forgetting to add in some components. They're not adding in the components that aren't, that they shouldn't be. Um, again, it's creating that bill of material based on us or based on the selections. We can go ahead and look at a quick view, which shows us everything that's been selected at a quick glance. And if they're happy with that, they can simply save and close. And before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and just click save. And what we're gonna take a look at here is that ExperLogix has the ability to give you the um, a chance to do a comparison if you wanted to. So let's say that you're talking with the customer, you've gone through this configuration, um, configured it to their liking, but now they're wondering what it would look like if they configured it slightly different. And so what we're gonna do is come back into the home button and duplicate this configuration. So now it's made an exact copy of every, everything that we've done, but now we're gonna go ahead and make some changes. And let's say that they decide to price it out for a smaller aquarium. So we're gonna go ahead and change it to 30 inches. Well, right away we've got a problem. And it says the pedestal tower is only available with tanks that are 36 inches or more in length. And so it actually lets us know they're gonna to have to either change that or they're gonna to have to choose a different pedestal. So in this case, if they want to price it out the smaller one, we'll go ahead and choose the full pedestal instead. Let's come down into the, the gravel selection and let's maybe do something different and add in an accessory. And now we've made that change. So we'll go ahead and just hit save, come back to the home page. And now you'll notice that we've got two different prices and you have the ability to compare them. 
And by clicking side by side, you can actually see just what's different about these particular configurations. We've got different different pedestals that have been added, different gravel selection, and one has an accessory that's different. So it's really a great opportunity if the sales rep is on the phone with the customer, they can be kind of talking through these. They can actually click on these links to give additional details about pricing information or if there's some dimensional information they want to talk through. Ultimately, if the customer decides that they want one or the other, they can go ahead and um, delete the one that they don't want, and then we can just go ahead and finish it off. Now, if they were purchasing, in this case, two fish tanks, we would just leave them both on there and go ahead and close out and finish out the process. Okay, so we'll give this just a moment to refresh, and then we're going to go ahead and take this information and close it back into back into NAV. Okay, so we've got one fish tank that's been configured. We're gonna go ahead and close. Now notice what's happened. ExperLogix gives you the ability to have line items. Some of them are makeable line items and some of them are just what we would almost consider as an accessory. So the actual aquarium and the pedestal are items that have to be made. These items are just additional items that are gonna go in the box, if you will. So the idea is, you know, once we've finished this configuration, the customer decides they wanna make move forward. Now it just becomes a nav functionality that we're gonna convert this to an order. Let's just know it's been converted to order 1045. We'll go ahead and open it. Now we've got those line items, but now what's a little bit different is we'll come into this action pane and you'll notice that there is a selection for ExperLogix to create the production order. So we're going to go ahead and click on that and we're going to see that this is the configuration that we need to create the production order for. So we'll create that production order. It's let us know that it successfully created production order 10-1048. So we'll go ahead and close that. And then what we're going to do is just go ahead and take a look at that production order. So close out of here. We're going to come into our production order and find 101048. Open that up. And now you'll notice that we've got the T1, which is the tank, which has a subassembly and the pedestal. And each one of these items has the different line components that we can actually see that are associated to that along with any route steps that are necessary um, if we had different routing areas that it would go through. Okay, so really saving a lot of time doing all of the, the heavy lifting up front. Now, as mentioned, ExperLogix really works the same within Business Central. So if we click over here to Business Central, uh, let me go ahead and refresh my page here. Within Business Central, ExperLogix also works within quotes and orders. So once again, if we started it from the quote, select our customer. Up here, we've got the ability to configure. So we'll go ahead and click on configure. And now that's going to launch into ExperLogix like we saw before in NAV. And it's just loading up the different demo databases that I have. So we'll give that a moment. There we go. So actually you can see the exact same demo. I'll just pop into there real quickly. We're not gonna make any changes at this point. You can see everything is really the same as what I showed in NAV. And then we'll just save and close and that's gonna take the information and populate it back here onto the line items like you saw before. Uh, same idea, we'll click on make order, yes. Converted to 1046, yes, we'll go ahead and open it. We'll come into the action pane, come over into ExperLogix, Oops, my, create production order, and we'll go ahead and create it. And there we are, 101049. Okay. So really the, the process between the two is the same, just a different look and feel between the aspects. Um, what I thought that I'd also just briefly um, show you is a couple other examples then. So we're just gonna go ahead and start a new quote and click on configure. 
And I'm going to pop into a couple of these other examples um, just to give you a look and feel of things that you can do differently with ExpertLogix. So in the software and hardware example, uh, you'll notice that we have the ability maybe to configure a complete system where it's looking at software, hardware, and services. Maybe we're just doing hardware only or add-on sales. Maybe you just want to use this specifically for ROI calculations. So really think of ExpertLogix as a way to um, filter out choices of how your sales reps want to use it. And when we choose complete system, what we're doing now is we're loading up everything that's configurable, um, having some hardware components that we can add in, having it calculate the software licenses for the, the hardware. Um, we've got total price, the software, support, services, any third-party products that we're adding in. And you'll notice that you can actually set it up as a tabular choice if you prefer to use that over having categories here on the left-hand side. Now for this demonstration, we're showing it both ways, but you could certainly hide this category bar and just use tabs if you prefer. Um, the logic is still gonna remain the same. So as you go through and start adding in some components, there might be additional details that you're putting in, some yes, no questions. As we go through, put in some details, um, add in another component. We've got a rule that says, hey, you have to add in configuration services when you have more than two monitors. So it automatically added that component in for us on the services, okay? If you tried to unmark that because that is a required component, it doesn't let you unmark it. But if there are other areas that aren't a required component, you can unmark it. Uh, we also give you the ability to have dashboarding. So if you wanted to be able to see everything at a very quick glance of what our total hardware is, total software, some support costs that have been calculated, our total services, maybe do some discounting based on who the customer is, you have all of that capability. Uh, you can even pop this out into a different window if you wanted to just kind of have this hanging off to the side while you're doing your configuration, everything is gonna be updating. Uh, manually. You can close this, you can pop it back in, um, lots of capabilities. We also give you the ability to just pin it. So if you wanted to pin that and be able to see it as we go through now and make some changes, we're going to get that real-time updating. Okay. So just wanted to give a different look and feel of how you can do, um, show you how responsive it is to be able to see now where our software and support all updating either in our dashboard or at the quick view line. Um, I'll pop into, I know we're just got a couple minutes left here, so I'll just pop into a valve example where maybe we want to just quickly search for a particular valve. We can do that. Maybe we're looking at type of valve that it is. And now we want to be filling in some information. Maybe we're looking at how it's going to be applied or maybe even a custom project. Um, so different ways that you can look at that. If you wanted to have a quick search, ExpertLogix gives you the ability to have um, picking based on different product selections. Once we select a product, maybe we want to filter it even further based on, you know, the vehicle that we're going to be putting this on. What year is it? Who's the manufacturer? What model is it? All along, ExpertLogix is going to be filtering the choices based on how we're answering some of these questions. So as we go through and pick our different products, we're ultimately going to get down into a product selection. Okay. So with that, um, again, I just wanted to kind of recap and make sure we leave some time for some questions here. Uh, ExpertLogix does work within the um, Business Central and NAV, as I showed. Whoops, didn't mean to start over. <laughs> Let's go back to this last slide here. So we wanna make sure that we have the fast and accurate quoting. It's an integrated solution. Ultimately, your salespeople are gonna be very happy using this because it's easy for them to learn, easy to use, fast, and have happy customers because the quotes are always gonna be accurate. So with that, I will uh, pass it back to you, Suzanne, and see if there's any questions. Great, thanks so much, Gwen. Thanks for watching this Archer Point video. If you found it helpful, make sure to check out our website and blog at www.archerpoint.com.
Additionally, if you have any questions regarding our products, services, or information in this video, feel free to email us at info at archerpoint.com. Thanks.